it's Allison of Dreamweaver Designs and Thinking Outside the Box. And today I'm going to show you how I created these beautiful cabochons that can be used for earrings and pendants. So I'm going to go ahead and get set up and show supplies needed and I'll see you in a minute. So the supplies needed to create this project are you're going to need some masking tape, some toothpicks, some UV resin of your choice, a lighter, if you want a flash cure, a small UV flashlight, a nail file, some mica powder, of course your blade, polymer clay of your choice, I prefer Primo by Sculpey, and you want it to be black. You're gonna need some cutters of your choice. I've used these cutters from RJ Crafts and you get a set of six of them in various sizes. And to create the design in our piece, this is actually a silicone texture mat and it has a cat hair on it. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> this I found on AliExpress, but I will have the link in the description below this video. This mat can be used for res used with resin and of course can be used with polymer clay. So, oh, and I forgot to colorize everything. You're going to need some DecoArt fluid acrylics. This is interference paints and these are all the colors. There's gold, magenta, turquoise, blue, violet, and green. And you will also need a small bottle to put water in so that you can spritz your water. Oh, and one last thing. You are going to need a fine paintbrush, something with a very fine tip to it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, get set up, and we'll get started. We'll get this party started. I have a sheet of black Sculpey Primo, and it is rolled out to a number four thickness on my pasta machine. One is the thickest. So this is a setting four. I like to use a little thinner setting because um, the finished product, I'm going to resin the front and the back. So that will add thickness. Now what we need to do is we need to get our texture into the clay. So this is just a little bit of water in a spritz bottle. So I'm just going to spritz that on there and put this down onto the clay and push our texture in. And you want to make sure that you get a good texture. You want it deep because we need the recesses to capture the paint. So just make sure you've gotten every spot. And you can lift up a little and check. And that looks good. We have nice texture in the clay. Now we are going to take our paints and color. And for this, I like to use a small brush. So what we are going to do is, let me get you in a little closer. We're gonna spritz the area with water pretty good. Want it nice and wet. And make sure that you've gotten every cell. And 
And if you need to, you can just kind of lightly rub the water around, make sure it's gotten into all the cells. And if you have to, you can spray a little more on, move it around with your finger. And I kind of have a little too much on there. I want to get it in all the cells, but you don't want it to run over into each cell like that because we need to leave, we don't want those cells to connect. So if you do, it'll just go over into the next one. So you don't want that, unless you want your colors to mix. But on this particular one, I do not want them to mix. So I'm just gonna kind of spread it around with my brush. And it never fails. As soon as you start filming something, you get all sorts of interruptions and UPS deliveries and people coming into your studio. <laughs> but it's all good. It is all good. All right, so you just wanna make sure that each cell has some water in it and some of these don't but that's okay, when we get to them, we can add more water. Just spritz a little more down here. All right, the next step is very similar, if not exact, to an old tutorial of mine. And I might be doing some remakes because they were back when I first started, so I don't know. I think I've gotten a little better since then. <laughs> All right, so you start with any color you want. I'm gonna start with the turquoise. I'm gonna shake it up good. You wanna get all that wonderful mica all mixed up in there. And I am going to work out of the cap, which just makes it a little easier. And you're simply going to put just a little bit onto the tip of your brush, dab it in that area, and swirl it around. You do not want to add a lot of paint for this process. You're just using a very little bit. And you're just going to go around wherever you want turquoise. You just want to make sure that you mix it up with that water that's in the cell. And if you get a little bit over into the next one, that's fine. You can either dab it out with a paper towel or you can leave it. And this doesn't look like much right now, but when it dries, it's going to look fantastic. So, but when I'm done here putting all the colors in, it's just gonna look like a hot mess. But when we let it dry and come back, you'll see how beautiful it is. And that one I added a little too much paint, but that's okay. And it spilled over into the one next to it. I'm just gonna kind of dab that out. No big deal. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you achieve the look you want and the colors where you want them. Just remember, you're only gonna use a little bit of paint on the tip of your brush. Put it in to a cell puddle and a little more there. Okay. 
So I'm sure you don't want to watch me do this, or you might, and I'm sorry if, if I do this off camera because you wanted to watch, but I know a lot of people don't like to sit there and watch a long process. So I am going to wipe my brush off, put my cap back on, and I'm gonna go to purple now. And it doesn't really look like turquoise, it looks white. That's fine. When it dries, it's going to be turquoise. These paints look white until they've dried and they really only show the effect on, or I should say the best way to see the effect is on black. So now I've got purple and I'm just going to mix some of that around because I have a little too much on my brush. So we'll share it with this one over here. Oh, someone's flying very low over my house. I have the windows open today in the studio because it's absolutely gorgeous out. And I would much rather have fresh air in here. All right, so I am going to do the rest of this off camera using all the colors. And when I have finished, I will be back. Okay, so I only have a few left and I'm using the gold interference. So I'm going to fill in these last few cells. And you wanna to remember to get all these little ones too. There are some really small ones. You don't wanna leave those blank. So I'm gonna make sure to get all the little ones. Dab a little in there, and I've got this one here. And you're trying not to get um, paint on the raised black part. You want to just leave it within the cells. All right, that looks good. Got a few spots here that I missed. These really little ones are very, very easy to miss. And I don't want to use gold right there, so I'm going to pull out my purple and add some purple there, even though there's a little bit of turquoise. But you're starting to see, as it dries, you start to see the um, color showing up. And what you're really going for in the long run is not for your whole cell to be painted, but like this, to have a area on the inside that's black, but when you move it around, it also looks like it's filled in because it has just a little bit of the interference on it. So I'm going to kind of dab in the middle of these with my brush. Kind of stir that one up a little more. And get it so some of that middle isn't really covered. So my brush is kind of soaking up some of the water that's on there. And you don't have to do this step. I just like to do it just to make sure that there's only going to be a little bit of color in the middles there. Um, so I'm going for a more even look where that color is really just around the edges of the cell. 
but then again, when you look at it from an angle, you will see color in the middle too. So this stuff is really cool. I really like this paint a lot. So I'm just kind of dabbing in there with my brush and then wiping off on a paper towel. And sometimes you'll get a clump of paint. You don't really want that. You want it to be smooth. <clears throat> and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this dry. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog in my throat today. We're gonna let this dry and you want it to be completely dry before you cut your shapes out. So, you know, depending on how wet it is, it, you know, will depend on how long it takes to dry. My advice is just to let this sit for a good, you know, three to five hours. You can come back and check it. And when you see your color um, really vibrant, I mean, you'll tell, you can tell when it's dry but you don't want to do anything until it is definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, dry. So I'm just gonna go around to the last few, kind of soak up some of the water. here in fact that one doesn't look like it has any color in it so let's put blue there that may be one that I missed oops I made a mess A little bit of blue in there. And you didn't have to use all the colors. Um, I just did that for this tutorial just to show you what all the colors look like. Um, you know, you can use two colors, three colors, whatever you want. Just use your imagination. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I wanted you to see what each color looks like on the black clay. All right, this looks pretty good. So I am going to let this dry. And like I said, that can take anywhere from two to six hours, depending on how much water you have used and when it is fully dry I will come back and we'll go ahead and cut our shapes out. Okay. It is completely dry now and as you can see much more beautiful than it was and it will actually once we put the resin on it'll be even more beautiful. Um, the resin will really make these colors pop and sparkle. So the next step is we need to decide what cutters we want to use and we're going to make um, earrings and a pendant. So the cutter that I used for the others I feel was was perfect size for earrings. So we're going to go with the third smallest and I'm going to put these in order. So the third smallest for the earrings and I'm thinking I probably want to go large for the pendant. So I'm going to use the largest for the pendant. And then it's just basically deciding, and I'm going to pull you in a little closer, just basically deciding where on this you want to cut your pieces out. So I'm just going to kind of randomly do it, I guess. Um, kind of no rhyme or reason. 
but trying to use my space sparingly so that I can get several earrings and pendants out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead, I like to use an acrylic block when I used cutters. That's just what I do, you don't have to, you can just push it down with your hand, but this is the way that I like to do it. So I am going to do that. And let's see, our next one, you kind of want to look at your colors. You, you know, you kind of want to put it where you think it's the best, but it's a mishmash of colors anyway, so it really doesn't matter. So that's entirely up to you. And I think I'll be able to get two pairs of earrings out of this. And maybe just one pendant, but we'll see how that goes. Might be able to get two, <clears throat> but I don't think so. I think we're only gonna get one. <clears throat> yeah. Just going to be one. So you want to decide where you want it with the most pretty colors. And I think because we're gonna be putting a hole in the top. I kinda of don't wanna lose that blue there, so I'll pull it up to there. And give it a wiggle and a jiggle. And there you go. So now you're just gonna pull your clay up and away from your pieces. And if you've watched any of my other videos, um, I, I like to save my scraps. You could make beads or whatever out of them, but if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see that I do clean up after bake. That's just what I like to do in most cases. So I'm just going to make sure that these tips are down on the tile, and they are. So this is what we have. And all these dirty edges that you see here is really just clay on the tile. And if I do have any on the edges, I'll go ahead and clean it up after bake. So I like to, Primo is to be baked at 275. And I don't go with what's on the packaging time-wise. I bake for an hour. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in my oven at 275 for one hour and I'll be back. Okay, these are out of the oven and fully cured. And our next step is to go ahead and apply the resin. Now, what I like to do, since these are already stuck to the tile from baking them on it, is I like to get that first coat of resin done with it still stuck on the tile. So I'm gonna zoom you in a bit. And we are going to go ahead and apply a thin coat of resin to the tops. And you want to use a toothpick to spread this around. And I'm just using a thin coat for the first coat that goes on top. And our edges can still be cleaned up once we take it off the tile if there's need for a cleanup. So we're not, uh, we're not gonna resin those edges just yet.
And I do have a video on how I apply UV resin because I'm probably going to skip over um, some of the process in this one. So I'll link that video below this on, in the description of the video. You'll be able to find it there. All right, so we're just getting one thin layer, making sure to bring it to the edge. All the way around. And that looks good. Now we're going to take a lighter and run it over the top. And what that does is it just gets out any bubbles that are in the resin. And I want to make sure that I've got it everywhere on the edges. And for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to flash cure this because I need to run it over to my UV lamp. And I don't want the resin to move and spill. So I just run a little UV flashlight over it to flash cure it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and do the tops of the rest. And then I'm gonna put it under my actual UV lamp for eight minutes and I'll be back. The top coat is fully cured. And the reason I like to leave it on here is for all the other coats, I'm going to put it down on um, masking tape so that the pieces don't curl. And because we baked it on here, it stuck to the tile so that first coat, the piece didn't curl any. So that's why I do that. It's just a time saver. So now we're gonna go ahead and take these off of our tile and we are going to clean up any edges that need cleaning. And let me move this out of the side, off to the side. This here is really just the clay that was stuck to the tile. So all I'm basically gonna do is lightly go over it with a nail file. Very simple, very quick, comes right off. And now your edges are nice and clean. And that's all you have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish the others, cleaning up the others, and I'll all be right. back. Our edges are all cleaned up, and I did that on all of the pieces, as you can see here. The next step is we wanna put a coat of resin on the back. And I need to set my tile up to do that. So I'm gonna get out my masking tape and I fold the edges down a little so that I can hold it. And now I want to put a piece of masking tape at each end to hold that tape down to my tile. And then what I also like to do is put some masking tape along the edges to really hold that masking tape down. And I just put just a little bit on the edge there. All right, now I'm going to put my pieces onto the tape, 
face down. And our pendant isn't gonna fit on here, so I'm just gonna do the earrings first. Make sure they're stuck down good at your edges, at both ends. And then you're simply going to put a very thin coat of resin on each one Run it around with your toothpick, making sure to get all the way to the edge. And you're gonna do that the same way with the other, with the others and then they can all be cured at the same time under the UV lamp. And I suggest curing these um, anywhere from five to eight minutes. I know that eight minutes is a good number for me. I know that it's fully cured. It's not sticky anymore, not gummy. So I usually just go eight. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to the others on the tile cure them under the UV lamp for eight minutes and I'll be back. All right, the backs of the earrings are now fully cured. And before we go on to the next step of the resin, I wanna add something pretty to the back of these. Now for that first layer, you could have mixed some glitter in with your resin and then put it on but I wanted to show you that you can use mica powders. Um, I'm gonna be using Born Pretty Purple, and I'll have a link to this. Uh, I think it's one of their chrome powders, and it's very sparkly and very pretty. So you want the back of your earring and your pendant to be just as pretty as your front, because you know, you know that it'll be seen. You could just leave it black if that's what you wanna do, but I always have to have a little more sparkle to my stuff. <laughs> so <clears throat> this has resin. This, any kind of mica, is going to stick to cured resin. So you just simply take a little on an applicator and you just rub it onto the back. And you won't use it sparingly, you're just using a very little and that just gives it some extra sparkle. Now you wanna be careful, you don't wanna get this on the front um, because it will stick to that resin on the front. So you do wanna be careful with that. But just to show you how pretty and sparkly the backs can be. And we'll be adding another coat of resin to that so that will lock it in. So I'm gonna go finish up the others, uh, the rest of the earrings and the pendant backs, and then we'll go on to the next step. I did wanna show you, after I put the Born Pretty powders on, I like to take my finger and burnish it in. And that gives it more of a shiny effect as opposed to super sparkly. It still will be sparkly, but this gives it the chrome look. So you're just burnishing it in with your finger. It's not gonna wipe off. It's just going to have more of a chrome finish to it. And that also helps not getting it onto the front when we go to resin the sides of the piece. And if you're wondering what that noise is, I am in my studio and it is raining out. I have a tin roof, a metal roof, and the sound of the rain is what you're hearing on my roof. Okay, so this is the finished effect when you do it with your, when you uh, burnish it in with your finger. 
So the next step is to get these off the tiles. And you wanna make sure that you don't have any mica on your fingers. And I'm gonna get a baby wipe here because you do not wanna transfer that to the front of your pieces because that mica loves to stick to resin and we've resined the front. So you wanna make sure your hands are clean. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off to the tile and I do not want to use that tape again. I'm gonna to have to retape when we go to finish adding resin to the front and the back because we don't wanna transfer that mica to the front. If you find your piece is a little curved after um, curing it, no worries. If you have clean fingers, <laughs> which my fingers keep getting mica on them. You can go ahead and because it's polymer clay, you can bend a little to get it back into shape. So I am going to take all of the earrings off of the tile. and I'm gonna show you how I do edges. What you want is a small uh, container, and this is just a silicone mold, and I'm gonna put a very little amount of resin in there. Now make sure that your hand that is gonna hold your piece is clean, and that you don't have any mica on it, and now I have lint all over my fingers. I'm gonna put a small amount of resin in here. And we are going to apply the resin to the edge. Normally, I would just put this under my UV lamp, but since I'm not sitting at my UV lamp, I'm gonna flash cure it. So you just take a small amount with your toothpick and just run it along the edge of your piece. And then I would hold this under the UV lamp for you know about a minute and then do the other edge. But like I said, I'm not at my lamp, so I'm gonna have to flash cure it. And it's okay if you get a little bit of resin on the top or on the bottom, no big deal because we're going to be putting another layer on both sides. So that's what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and move this so it doesn't cure. And then I'm just gonna flash cure this edge. So I can do the other edge and then put it under my, U <clears throat> put it under my UV light, my UV lamp. <clears throat> All right, so that one's done, kind of. I still like to put it under the lamp for about five minutes to make sure those edges are fully cured. So I said I wasn't going to show you how I UV resin in this video, but it looks like I am. So we're just going to go with it. I don't need to post a link to the other video. All right, that looks good. Go ahead, move this out of the way, and flash cure. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that with all the rest of them. I will put them under my UV lamp for five minutes, and then we are going to apply a layer to the front and, and the back not in that order. We're going to go with the back and then the front. So you're going to want to set your tiles up with fresh tape that doesn't have any mica on it because we don't want that mica transferring to the front of our piece. So I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of these off camera and I'll be back. All right, the edges are all cured and now 
we are going to put our pieces down on the tape. And we're going to cure the backs. And I'm going to have to move this one so that I can fit all four over here. And we're just going to put a layer of resin down on the back and cure. So I'm going to go ahead and do one to show you and then I'll be back when they're all done. <clears throat> And you're going to put a little more resin on this time than that thin coat that you put. So I'm just going to do them one at a time and flash cure so I don't have any spillage over the edges. But you'd want to make sure on this last coat of resin that you do a really good job and get up to all your edges. And go ahead and run over with your lighter to get out any bubbles. Check your edges carefully. And <clears throat> I'm gonna flash here just so I can get it over to my UV lamp. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest off camera and I'll be back when they're fully cured. You want to put them uh, once you get the resin on the back, you want to put them under your UV lamp for eight minutes. All right, the backs are now completely cured, and now we want to do the fronts. So simply, if you need to bend a little because maybe they got a little curved, you can do that now and just put them onto your tile. And I think I'm gonna rearrange these just a little bit better because they're so close to each other. And push them down onto the tile and then do the same with the pendant. All right, and for the next step, since I've got my fingerprints all over them, pushing them down onto the tile. I'm just gonna rub my fingerprints off with a paper towel before I resin them. All right, just gonna move in a little closer. And we're gonna go ahead and resin one of them and then I'll do the rest off camera. Now this one, you're gonna use a little thicker coat like we did on the back, but this one I like to go even a little thicker because this is going to be the front and it's going to dome it. So you don't wanna start with too much because you don't want it to go over the edge. You can always add more, but it sure is a pain when you have overspill. And that's another reason I like to flash cure, because sometimes things will spill over before you can even get them into your UV lamp. And it can be cleaned up. It's just, you know, just a pain. I don't like it when it happens. It just takes extra time and you want to get something done. So make sure that you've got all your edges. You really want this last coat of resin 
to be perfect and beautiful. You don't want any bubbles. You want everything going up to your edges. You want everything to be perfect. And I like to look at it from the side too before I cure, just to make sure everything looks good. All right, I'm gonna run my lighter real quick over the top to get out any bubbles. And I am going to flash cure just to hold everything in place. Don't want anything spilling over. And then I'm gonna do the rest off camera. Go ahead and cure them under the lamp and I'll be back. All right, we are at the last step. These are finished, totally cured, and we need to drill a hole in them. So the first thing you need to determine is what end you want your hole drilled. I, you could drill a hole at both ends and hang it that way, but I prefer that it be going this way. And I think I'm gonna drill the hole up here. What I have here is just an old piece of wood and I put a piece of paper over it to protect the piece from getting scratched. And you can either use a black Sharpie or a white paint pen to figure out where you wanna put your hole. And I'm gonna zoom in a little more. And I, because this has a lot of black in it, I'm gonna go ahead and use my white paint marker. And you wanna make sure that it's primed and ready to go. Which that is now. Put the cap back on. All right, so you're gonna to wanna to eyeball. You don't want it too close to the tip but you need it far enough or close enough so that you can put a jump ring on it and you'll have to use a larger jump ring. So I think I'm gonna put my hole right about there. So I'm gonna to have to eyeball it this way so I can see. And I'm just gonna tap right there so I know where to place my drill bit. Now this is a Dremel 3000 and I usually, it can be hit or miss doing these. Um, I'm gonna turn it this way. I usually put my drill right down where I wanna drill and then turn it on. Now, the reason for the wood is so that I can drill into that wood instead of my table. <laughs> Don't wanna do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down where the hole is supposed to be, tilt it up, hold on to my piece and I just do it very quickly. Just like that. And you have a perfect hole. And you'll just go ahead and do that with your other pieces. And you're, you're good to go. You just put a jump ring in there and you can attach it to a chain uh, the others, you will drill the holes and do as an ear wire. Uh, attach a, you'll have to put a jump ring on and then an ear wire to that. And that'll give you your finished product. And that's all there is to creating these really cool looking earrings and pendant. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that you found it helpful. If you did, please like and comment. And while you take a moment to please subscribe to my channel, I bring tutorials when I can. I enjoy bringing them. I try to be original and fun and free, which is the best part. <laughs> so if you would please click that subscribe button and that bell and you will get notifications when new tutorials go up. So until next time, Thank you so much for joining me and 
Have a wonderful day, a wonderful week, and a wonderful weekend. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.